This is a gamepad. And I wrote a little plugin that allows you to control Python using this gamepad. And I get that this sounds like a party trick, but hear me out. I think a gamepad could be a killer feature for people who want to annotate their own data or people who are just worried about data quality in general. If you're in AI or in ML, then checking your data is probably the main thing you need to do. And it's something that the industry knows that it should do, but it's still something that a lot of people don't. So instead of talking and talking about this phenomenon of data quality, instead I figured maybe it'd be better to just make it more fun for you to look at your own data. And I do think that by adding a gamepad, you can actually make it feel more like a video game. And it's something I've actually found super productive in my day to day. So in this video, I'm gonna to explain to you how I built this any widget that allows you to pick up these gamepad events from a browser. I will then also show you how you can hook that into Python. And then I'm also just gonna show you some annotation interfaces and things that you can build on top of this that hopefully will make it more fun and easy for you to actually do some data quality checks with a gamepad. So quick first demo. What I've got over here is a library called Mopad and that's the library that I made. And inside of that, you're gonna see that we've got this gamepad widget and this widget is in any widget. So that means it doesn't just work in Marimo, you can also use it in other Python notebooks. But when you load up this widget, you do get this little UI element appear on top over here. And this is kind of meant for debugging mostly. And you're also immediately gonna see that right now, there is no gamepad detected. And the reason for that is because the web API that powers all of this, it needs to see a event from a gamepad before it can actually respond to them. Uh, the fix here is relatively simple. You just take your gamepad, touch any button, and it starts to detect it. Now to confirm what you can do is I can touch these uh, left and right sticks and we can see that values update. There are also all these buttons that I can press. So the ones in the back, I've also got some in front over here and you can see that every time that I touch any of these buttons, uh, the current button press updates and you can also see that the timestamp uh, whenever I hit this button, that is also something that uh, updates automatically. Finally, uh, we've got the D-pad over here, which is a bit of a special citizen. With the D-pad, you can have an event that kind of goes like left or right or up but you can also have right and left, for example. It's also something that can happen on the D-pad. But the really cool thing here is that I can confirm that these events actually do come in. I can now close this UI because I don't need it anymore. And the reason that I don't need it is because that widget, because it's an any widget, can actually emit Python objects. And in this case, it emits a dictionary. And every time that I hit a button or if I do something with these axes or if I do something with the D-pad, we can see that this Python dictionary updates, which means that in return, we can build something reactive on top of this. We could build something that does something along the lines of, whenever this dictionary changes, do something else in some other cell. And this is particularly nice in Marimo because the cells are reactive, which means that every time that I press a button here, this cell can cause other cells to also automatically update as well via this reactive mechanism that Marimo is uh, somewhat famous for. So just to explain the flow one more time, we've got our gamepad and via a little bit of JavaScript, which I've abstracted away via this widget, you can get stuff updating in Python. And that means that the next thing that we're gonna wanna do is we wanna have this Python then also update a UI on our behalf. So as a next step, let's actually build an annotation interface uh, on top of this. And here is a example. What you're looking at here is the item that I need to annotate. So there's a question, does this text indicate a new data set? And then there's an example listed down below. And then there are these things here that look like buttons, but they really aren't. These are really just span elements that tell me what button to press. So for example, if I wanna annotate that that example is indeed correct, then I need to press the B button. And that's also highlighted down below over here. If it's not correct, I need to hit A, which is this button. And then I've also set it up in such a way that these two back buttons do something cool. If I wanna undo what they did before, I can go back by hitting this left trigger button at the back, but I can also skip the current example by hitting this right one over here. And let's now see what happens when I actually press some buttons here. If I press B, then I can see new examples appear on the left. And on the right, I can indeed confirm that I seem to be accepting a couple of examples. I can also say that a couple of these examples are wrong, that I want to reject them. I can also go back so we can see that we indeed move back. And if I don't know for sure, I can also attach the skip label uh, by hitting this button over here. But suddenly what I am able to do now is I'm able to lean back, look at my big display and enjoy a very ergonomic form factor to go through maybe a few hundred examples. It honestly doesn't take that long, but you can definitely hopefully imagine that if you have this guy on your desk, that it's much easier to just spend 30 minutes a day annotating a few examples, which you can then use for fine tuning or for whatever purpose. But having this as a gamepad makes it so inviting to actually start doing that. I wanna mention a couple of use cases for this, but I also wanna show how this works under the hood because it does revolve around this one trick that you wanna do. 
And that trick is down below over here. So you can see again, I've got my widget, but at the bottom over here, there's this any widget feature that I'm using, which is that I'm attaching a observer function onto that widget. In short, what that allows me to do is it allows me to say, look, whenever there's a change in the current timestamp key, whenever that number changes in the state, then run this Python function. So in short, this is now something that will run every single time I hit any button. This is the observer function that then triggers. It receives a change event. And this change event has this new key, which tells me when the new event came in. And I have a state object from a remo that I'm using here to throttle a little bit. I'm effectively saying, make sure that we don't accidentally trigger two events in one go. And a way to check for that is to make sure that at least 150 milliseconds have passed in between. If this is the case, I also set the new current timestamp. That's what I'm doing over here. But from here, I check the widget properties. There's a button ID over here, which should yield a accept label. There's a button ID over here that should yield a reject label. Same for skip, same for previous. But you can really hook up anything that the widget can emit, which is basically anything that your gamepad can emit. And one detail there is that you do have these different gamepads and different gamepads have different controls on them. So you do want to keep that in mind as you design this part, right? So different button IDs might not translate well across all these different gamepads, but it is pretty easy to figure out. And the one thing that happens afterwards is that this annotate function, of course, triggers and this annotate function over here does a little bit of state management on the Marimo side. So it's going to attach a new annotation to some sort of list of annotations, and it's going to go ahead and fetch the next example, and it's going to keep on iterating, keep on iterating. And this is also why the UI on top over here updates. Every time there's a button press, a new example is being shown because that's a reaction, and we also update the data frame over here, again, because that's a reaction. And what I just did is a pretty basic and brief demo. I just showed you that you can get gamepad events into Python, but let's take a step back and also appreciate just how general this actually is, because we've got Python available, which also means that we can hook up Python to maybe a database. We can use that to get examples that still need to be annotated. And moreover, we can also use it to add annotations into our database. And again, Python is at our disposal, so I'm pretty sure you can figure out how to get MongoDB, Postgres, or what have you set up in order to get this to work. What's more, we also have these machine learning tricks at our disposal. When you're annotating, you're typically looking for the best subset to annotate first. These could be examples where the model shows a lot of confusion. These could be examples where two models disagree. There's lots of these tricks that you can apply, such as you're clever and maybe use a little bit of active learning. And again, because we've got Python at our disposal, sky's the limit. And as far as user interface goes, I just showed you something that was relatively simple. But honestly, this does cover a lot of ground as is, I think. And that is because when you're annotating, binary decisions are actually kind of preferable. If there's only two options to pick from, maybe with a back button and a skip button included, then the cognitive load also remains kind of small, which in turn means you're going to get more labels and probably labels with higher quality. And what's more, binary decisions actually cover more than just a binary classification use case. Suppose that you've got some sort of prompt engineering task and you've got some output from LLM1 and you've got some output from LLM2. In this case, the binary decision is definitely still binary because either this was better than that or vice versa, or they're roughly about equal. But all of those options, again, can easily map onto any of these buttons on this gamepad. So yes, this gamepad is a little bit of a party trick. I get that, but I honestly hope that just like me, you are going to be able to just have a little bit more fun annotating your own data. And if nothing else, you might have also just found yourself a good reason to go to your employer and see if you can expense one of these. Because honestly, if this is the thing that makes you annotate your data, then this will easily be worth the 50 bucks you're spending on it. If you're eager to give this a spin, the name of the library is called Mopad. You can find the demos that I gave just now onto the repo itself. But what you can also do is you can go to GitHub Pages and use the notebook in WASM mode to also give this a spin. This runs fully in the browser, but also from here, as long as you've got your Bluetooth connection, you can see that things indeed update and you can go ahead and hack away. And hopefully you're also gonna have as much fun as I did. I really hope this is useful. Thanks for listening.